all began just by chance, without planning. Anfang dieses Ausstellungsprojekts steht ein Zufall, beziehungsweise eine ganze Reihe von Zufällen. My life as a photographer was not planned. I went to university, UCLA in Los Angeles, <coughs> for five years from 1929 to 19. 54. And then I went up to Berkeley with a friend who was getting his master's degree. So we ran an apartment there and I moved up there. I was not enrolled at university. I wasn't studying anything. I just wanted to go to school. One day I decided I'd come home from Los Angeles in February 19. Did I say 50? 1936. Not 56, 1936. I was 26 years old. And I came home. And two weeks later, I met some young man through my sister who worked for Richard Neutra. I had never met an architect before in my life. So he took me one day to see a Neutra house right here at the Bob and Laurel Canyon, the Coon House, one of Neutra's early houses. And while he was in the house meeting with a contractor, I walked around with my little Kodak camera, took some snapshots and made some 8 by 10 prints, gave it to him that week. He showed them the Neutra, Neutra liked them very much. He wanted to meet me, so in March 1936, I drove over to meet Neutra. He liked my pictures. Will I take more photographs for him so I could be in photographer? Like that. No planning. I never wanted to be a I never knew what I was going to do with my life. I became a photographer. Here I am, 68 years later. Vor circa zwei Jahren bin ich bei der Recherche zu meiner Diplomarbeit über die österreichische Architektin Liane Zimmler, die 1938 auswandern musste und nach Los Angeles gegangen ist, durch einen der vielen Zufälle darüber gestolpert, dass Julius Schulman ein Projekt von ihr fotografiert hat, nämlich das Haus Toch in den 40er Jahren. Und weil er ein wichtiges Haus von Leanne Zimbler fotografiert hat, kam mir der Gedanke, Kontakt mit ihm aufzunehmen. Wie meine Mutter das, das Haus für den Ernst Toch gebaut hat, hat der Schulmann das dann fotografiert. Er war schon damals ein bekannter Fotograf, obwohl er noch nicht so bekannt war wie heutzutage. Er war damals auch noch jung. Das war ungefähr, im, so viel ich mich erinnere, im, im Jahr 1940 oder so etwas. Und das, das Haus war natürlich sehr bescheiden, denn es wurde mit einer sogenannten FHA-Loan gebaut. Das war ein, ein, ein Darlehen, das man von der Regierung bekommen konnte mit sehr niedrigem Zinssatz. Und das durfte nicht so luxuriös sein. Aber dann viele Jahre später hat er eine, eine Eigentumswohnung fotografiert, die, die meine Mutter und auch schon ich zusammen eingerichtet hatten. Und das war schon eher sehr luxuriös. Das war ein Penthouse, also oben im obersten Stock von dem Gebäude, mit schöner Aussicht, mit Balkon und so weiter. Und das waren schöne Fotografien, so viel ich mich erinnere. Aber da, so viel ich weiß, waren das die einzigen zwei Arbeiten von meiner Mutter, die er fotografiert hat. Damals war er natürlich schon viel berühmter. Das war im, im Jahr 74, glaube ich.
broken down. It should be up like this, 45 degrees. Okay. You can leave that ladder here for me if you want to. <laughs> I can use that. I give you a dollar and fifty cents for it. For each set. Or they go with you. Yeah, take a minute. Sure? Yeah. But you have to get something warm. This is a good. How that happened? Oh. The big Italian stone pine was blowing leaning over because it got too heavy. And the branches were hanging over the pool. So the gardeners cut the branches off. Some of the big branches fell on the sculpture, broke off the arm. So now they're welding it. That's okay. Go for it. Now what, what Ed Kellyworth became very famous for, it, Ed Giddings, I mean, in uh, Mexico was that he was able to use native materials and native workmen. And he created, mm -hmm. look at that space. That shows the different levels. It's a, kind of, it's a kind of architecture which is something we don't see in this country. And I think it's important, as far as my work is concerned, here it is looking down to the ocean, Ocho Casca. See the levels? And look at the roofs. Isn't that beautiful? These are Mrs. Giddings and two of her girlfriends. They gave me a fashion show for my photography. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, in other words, I didn't just do architecture. This is built hat er fotografiert, da hat er für ein pharma äh, magazine fotografiert mhm. und äh, war dann, hat also an, 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 hier am Thanksgiving Day in, äh, bei den Leuten gearbeitet und die hatten ihn dann eingeladen zum Thanksgiving äh, Essen. Das ist wirklich eines meiner, meiner Lieblingsfotos, weil es äh, so ein Zeitdokument ist. So ein, <laughs> it's etwas zum Schmunzeln, zum Lachen. Das ist wirklich schon toll. The great significance to me about my architectural photographer is to portray how a house or public building or school, whatever, attracts the public. It makes people want to live in that house. They want their children to go to that school. Whatever I'm showing, the responsibility is for the photographer and the architect to give the magazine editor photographs, which would not only sell the magazine, but sell to the public, the value of good architecture. And these old pictures show this very well. The first house I ever photographed, first modern house was a house by Richard Neutra. Yeah. And there's nothing new under the sun. But my photograph was taken in such a way, here's the indoors, here's the outdoors, the light balance is the same. I knew how to do that from the beginning. Indoor, outdoor exposure. Most photographers never really learn how to use proper lighting to balance the inside and the outside or vice versa. I knew how to use lighting, proper intensity. So it's a, the nose, there's no secret to it. It's very simple.
aufschreiben, wie heißt das, das Jury finden kann. This is uh, Pitkin Brothers gas station. This is uh, camping in Palm Canyon. It's not by Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. This is um, Joyce's home radio system. <laughs> This whole thing could probably fit in a little... Yeah, yeah, today. <laughs> um, this is the uh, Bay Bridge. Bay, yeah, it's not the it's Bay Bridge. Yeah, it's the Bay Bridge. Uh -huh. Wie habe ich Julius kennengelernt? Ganz einfach. Ein Freund von mir, Peter Gössel, hat an dem Buch gearbeitet, Kiss Study Houses, mit Julius Schulman. Und er fragte mich, ob ich die zeitgenössischen Fotos, also wie die Häuser heute sind, machen würde. Was natürlich für mich ganz gut war. Damit war ich also dann wieder in Amerika und äh, konnte also dann äh, hier auch arbeitsmäßig so ein bisschen weiter Fuß fassen. So, und es war sofort so ein Draht da. Irgendwann klingelte das Telefon und er rief an und er hatte ein Assignment und äh, fragte mich, ob ich das mit ihm zusammen machen wollte. Und dann haben wir das gemacht und wir haben uns besser verstanden, noch besser verstanden. Und äh, dann kam das nächste, der nächste Telefonanruf für ein nächstes Assignment und wir haben also das Ding dann auch gemacht. So, und äh, dann haben wir uns darüber unterhalten, ob wir nicht und zusammenarbeiten sollten. Und äh, für ihn war das also wirklich das Rauskommen aus dem Retirement. Er hat sich zur Ruhe gesetzt mit 73. Und äh, er wollte das und hatte also dann mit mir und den Partner gefunden, der also äh, auch äh, für ihn akzeptabel war. Und ich hatte natürlich auch Spaß daran, mit ihm zu arbeiten, weil ich viel gelernt habe, viel mitbekommen habe, weil er halt doch ganz anders sieht. Und wenn man das so lange gemacht hat, also wenn man wirklich ja, fast 70 Jahre im, oder sagen wir mal 60 Jahre Architekturfotografie betrieben hat, dann äh, hat man schon ein ganz anders geschultes Auge. Und ich habe sehr viel von ihm gelernt in der Richtung, äh, worauf man achten muss, gerade bei Architekturfotografie, wo man äh, Lücken lassen muss, wo man Durchblicke lassen muss und, 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 damit ein Gebäude erkennbar ist, dass man nicht erst so einen Floorplan Floorplan haben muss, um Haus zu begreifen, wenn man also ein Architekturmagazin durchgeht, sondern dass man also den Floorplan des Hauses begreifen kann über die Fotografie. Und das ist ein ganz wichtiger, eigentlich eine ganz wichtige Sache, die er immer wieder versucht, ganz klar durchzuziehen. Nicht? Also ein Haus über Fotografie zu erklären, sodass der Architekturplan nicht mehr wichtig ist. Das ist auch zum Beispiel so eine ganz wichtige Sache bei Julius, dass er unheimlich offen ist. Also offen ist, was Weltpolitik angeht, was Politik in Kalifornien angeht, was Architekturmaßnahmen in Kalifornien, in der Welt und, und, und angeht. Er liest die Zeitung, also wenn ich morgens zu ihm komme, dann hat er die Zeitung schon gelesen. Ich dann teilweise mit meinem radebrechenden Englisch habe dann also auch schon die Headlines und die wichtigen Punkte gelesen, aber so schnell bin ich ja nicht wie er. Und dann wird darüber gesprochen. Nicht? Und es ist äh, also auch, wie progressiv er in seinem Denken ist. Dass also, wenn er sich auseinandersetzt mit Architektur in Los Angeles, was passiert Downtown, Disney Music Hall und, und, und. <Musik>
that's a house. Uh, oh. It's a house I was photographing. 1938, I think, from Paul Last. I parked my car, set up my camera to go into the house. The dogs began to bark at me. So I looked in there, the dog, the dog is there is a big Great Dane, big, sound asleep, stretched out. He just eat a lot of food, so he's sleepy. So I, I tried to wake him up, he didn't get up, so I took a picture just of two dogs. That's when I sent the picture to Life magazine in New York, and they published it. The people who read the magazine always wrote to the editor, what happened to the third dog? He realized that that was why if I had the other dog in the picture, they wouldn't have published it, because it shows everything. <laughs> so that's a little story about this. It was the first house. This is a big house that Laszlo had designed. But this, yeah. Diane Rosenstein is on the phone. She says Rosenstein, I say Just Rosenstein. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon. I tried to find your number in my phone book yesterday. I couldn't find it. I found it this morning. So anyhow, uh, we have the transparencies here. Oh, hi, this is Julia Shulman. Good. I'm, I'm surprised that your mommy didn't answer the phone. The one hold up Great. Well, I have some friends here from Frankfurt, Germany, from a gallery, a museum there. If I have an exhibit of my photographs, big pictures, and they want to use pictures of your house, of course. Now, can they see the house? Well, they're going to be here until Friday. Today is Tuesday. They determined that this photograph is the most widely published architectural photograph in the history of residential architecture all over the you world. You see, Hollywood Boulevard goes up on the ramp on the right side, which turns off the Laurel Canyon Boulevard. Actually, Julius, um, he was just right there at the very beginning when Pierre Koenig uh, got the contract because we had interviews about six different people. Mm -hmm. Four of them said this lot You'll never be able to build a house on it. Uh -huh. Pierre said, I think we can do it. <laughs> so he was the smartest contract. one. <laughs> but uh, it was just a case of, uh, we t I looked in my telephone book for architects. That's exactly how we started the whole thing. The next stop <laughs> is right there. <laughs> yeah. We figured that's 125 feet. And then the other one down below is Hollywood. Hollywood Boulevard that <laughs> comes down here and it ends up twirling around in here. <laughs> so all in all, he's just uh, was just been a very special man. He's been in our life for so many years. It goes back over 40 some years when he took the famous pictures to start the whole thing. So and. Pierre Koenig knew him, so Pierre's the one that asked him if he would come. And those two fellows have worked together all these many, many years until Pierre passed away this year. We took this in color, it came up beautiful. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. I need to interrupt. Yeah. You don't have anything on your calendar for Friday night, do you? It's coming Friday? Mm-hmm. When is, when is the thing for the... I need to know, because they need to come up here with Jürgen for you to sign all the photographs. The title of the case study, 22, with the man. Yeah. Is that Stockholm? Or what does it mean, Stockholm? It was published in Stockholm. What happened is I got a call from Stockholm. 
the editor of a magazine said, Mr. Shulman, we're doing a story about Playboy living. And we want to know if they have a picture of the two girl picture, only with a man in it. So when I took the two girls photograph, after I took the exposure, I didn't move the camera. And Pierre Koenig said, Julius, while the camera's set, let's take a picture of that man who was with us. He was with the uh, Bethlehem Steel Company. We were working all day photographing the house for the steel company. So he was there while we took the pictures of the girls. That beautiful Yosemite, I'm glad you chose that picture. This, this is Judy, did you know that? When she was a little girl. This was 1949, 1950 when we moved into the house. Okay, now. Wo ist mein Essen? Das weiß ich nicht, wo dein Essen ist. <laughs> It's okay, I have time. I got some telephone calls to make. More and more I realize how beautiful this building is. I'm going to use this to show my students, especially the interiors, how they interpret it. The interiors were done by an architect who was very thoughtful. I think this is beautiful. It doesn't have to be traditional. I like the way it's describing the four, the nucleus, the four columns. The whole building was designed based on four structures. All right. Very good. Well, Bon voyage.